Hello and thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel, Kate May Modern Day Mystic. We are looking at the full moon in Scorpio. This is a super, super powerful full moon. There are lots of changes going on for everyone. And this full moon in Scorpio, Scorpio is the planet of change, of transformation, of death, of rebirth, of um, endings and beginnings. So there is a huge amount of activity going on at the moment. Plus we have those Mercury and Pluto retrograde at the moment. So we have planets that appear to move backwards. So we have a lot of going back over things or bringing things back from the past to finally deal with things. So let's have a little read up of what I wrote for your full moon in Scorpio before we get into your tarot reading. So a transformational time. This full moon known as the flower moon, which represents the blooming of flowers during springtime. It is the last lunar eclipse in Scorpio for seven years. Lunar eclipses occur when the earth passes between the sun and the moon, casting a shadow on the moon. Astrologically, this represents a time of release and transformation as the shadow side of our emotions and subconscious is brought to the surface. Eclipse energy is like a full moon on steroids and it is amplified. In Scorpio, this eclipse may bring intense feelings of passion, desire and rebirth as we are urged to confront our fears and transform them into something more empowering. In addition, there is opposition to Uranus. Oppositions in astrology often bring a sense of tension and duality, and this eclipse will likely heighten those feelings. Uranus is known for bringing sudden changes and unexpected events, and its opposition to the full moon may indicate a time of unpredictability and instability. However, this is also an opportunity to break free from old patterns and embrace new beginnings. And I've been seeing a lot of my clients with a lot of tarot readings that are literally just saying just that. It's amazing how the cards really resonate to what's going on astrologically, um, particularly like five minutes ago when I saw someone. It was just literally coming off back of all this energy. Mercury and Pluto are also in retrograde. So to be more aware and mindful of this energy right now is super important, okay? Look back to where you were six months ago. What happened in January, uh, in November? What has served its purpose since then? Who has served their purpose since then? What or who do you need to let go of? A bigger picture is being built and sometimes we need to go through some pain or face hidden secrets that may now come to light. Depending on where Scorpio sits in your natal chart, this is where the most powerful part of the transformation is happening. This will help though with long-term healing, to be more compassionate and also to be more aware of a meaningful life. It's important to feel grounded during this emotional full moon, really important. So make sure you take time out and enjoy the outdoors, get close to nature, go barefoot and feel the energies of the earth underneath. The death card rules Scorpio along with the planet Pluto the planet of the underworld, which we said is always uh, is retrograde at the moment. Both bring in change, death, transformation and a rebirth. And while it's retrograde, it's like we've got a second chance to go back over these things that need to be released. Maybe we had a bit of a chance before and we didn't quite take it. So now it's really important that we're like, come on, guys, come on, guys. What does this mean? Ask yourself what you need to let go of now for your higher good. Now, we often say to uh, cleanse our crystals, don't we, and tarot cards and, and ourselves on a full moon. However, the energy of this one is uh, changeable. So we don't really want to bring that energy into our crystals, do we, or into our powers. It's a bit turbulent. So instead, find a stone, go onto a bridge, preferably tonight, but over the next three days. Um, actually, full moons and new moons work better in the next coming days. So this is when we have the realisation on the day itself. This is when we have the penny dropping moment or the idea. It's over the next few days that the idea starts to take shape. So it's perfectly perfect to do this over the next couple of days. Um, so instead of cleansing your tarot cards and crystals, use this full moon to um, cast a stone over a bridge into water or write and write on a bay leaf um, what you want to release, saying, I give permission for any karmic contracts that no longer serve my higher good to be released. You can say this out loud, or you can write it, like I said, on the bay leaf, or, or on some paper, someone's name if it's needed, um, and burn it, burn it safely, obviously, half and safely. Um, and then leave it for the next three days for the magic and the universe to do its work. But I'll repeat that again. I give permission for any karmic contracts that no longer serve my higher good to be released. 
to be released. So um, a full moon ritual can take place where you can just go into your quiet time, go into a quiet space. It's a time of reflection and it's a time of introspection, very much about completeness, fruit, fruition, 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 uh, fruition, fruition, and things that are bringing quite a lot of energy around. We've got a lot of energy now. So this is really important now to be calm, ground yourself. It's the only way that you can go through it and just take a breath and bring in some of that Taurus energy that we've got from the sun, ground yourself. Be present. Try not to worry too much about the future. Try not to think about the past. Just be present and breathe. Just breathe in this calmness into your space so that you can harness all that energy for your benefit. Uh, take a few deep breaths and really, you know, maybe sage the space, maybe just um, cleanse it for a, a new vibe, a new vibe, but with the intent of releasing write things out absolutely write things out so i like to write things on paper or bay leaves um and i've got a little cauldron somewhere to hand somewhere in here maybe oh it's over there and i like to put little things in that and then i set fire to it it's cast iron so it's nice and safe there so once you've um thought about what it is that you want to let go of write it out think about other things over the last few weeks few months uh, what has transpired what has succeeded what has come to fruition, what has, um, what needs releasing, what you're bumping up against, what is like graining at you, what is like getting on your tits a little bit. So see any opportunity here for expansion and for growth, but write things down, get it out of your head, release and declare. Once you've clarified what's come to fruition and what hasn't, once you've recognised what you need to let go of, write it down and release it. Getting, um, bringing down any, any barriers and uh, any blocks that's going to stop you moving forward now. Obviously doing a safe place. Beautiful time to take a moon bath. So you can get outside in the moonlight um, and allow the moon's energy to touch your skin. It was raining earlier, it's not now. Rain in the moonlight is great. Um, but um, have a lovely bath to just let everything go. When you see that everything falls, goes down the plug, shower or bath, Take that as it will take in all the energy with it. Visualise that all your energy is going down that plug as a whole. Taking with it everything that no longer serves you there. Alternatively, just go and stand out in, not naked, unless you really want to. Um, it might be a bit chilly where, where you are. It's definitely a bit chilly where I am to do that. But just stand and have a moon bath. Just stand and allow that moon's energy just to wash over you. Uh, as well as getting some vitamin D from um, the sunlight, if you go out there a bit earlier, you'll benefit just perfectly from the moonlight's energy. It helps reduce inflammation. It really does help connect to women's cycles as well. Um, if you know all about women's cycles, a bit of a mare mind, is it? Anyway. And the other thing you can do on a full moon is dance it out, sing, dance, um, bash it all out there. Um, celebrate your dreams, celebrate things that are going to be coming. You know, some things are not going to happen overnight, but you can still celebrate a law of attraction energy. Still celebrate what it is that you want to come up. Almost carving up that space of um, intent of like, this is my life. This is what's going to happen. Okay. And then dance rhythmically to what it is you want to create. Let's have a look at the tarot cards now for Scorpio for Moon. Here we go. First one. What is the energy around you now? What is the energy around you now? New ideas. New ideas. And energy. This is all about energy. This is a spark card. Spark of inspiration. Aces are always beginning. They've got the potential for beginning new things. So what energy is around you now? This is a go for it card. You might have lots of ideas. You might be buzzing. You are, of course, going to have to let things go in order to bring in this new energy. But this is a yes card without a doubt. It's excitement, it's fun, it's buzzy. There is an air of um, fire in your belly, if you like there, but positive things are coming. New opportunities are coming. Fabulous, we'll have that as our energy. Ooh, what do you need to leave behind? As if by magic, the Six of Swords. All your worries, all your stresses. Know that God, angels, universe has everything in hand. You may not know the way ahead. You might not know where you're going. 
However, the universe has a bigger plan and you're being guided safely to this next chapter. So you need to leave behind the stress, you need to leave behind the worries and that um, control of wanting to know where you want to go, says me. Wanting to know where you want to go all the time, wanting to know what's around the corner all the time. Let that go. But anything that's been on concern, particularly the last six months, anything that's been of concern or um, a bother to you, stress-wise, mentally-wise, now it's time to leave that behind. You're moving into calmer waters. Ooh, secrets coming out. Family money. There could be some money, honey. Or there could be some family money to do with secrets. Things of a material nature. Now, this doesn't have to be bad stuff. This could be positive stuff as well. Um, secrets coming out are connected here to the material world. So financial things, property things, anything that's got a practical nature, physical things, ourselves, but also with a family vibe. So you may be hearing some things that's connected to families. Traditions, uh, sorry, mm, transitions and changes occurring. Ooh, the magician. Got all the tools to do the job. Any change that you need to make, any transition that you need to make, anything that's occurring, just know that you've got all the tools to do the job, that you can handle this, that you've got this, and that you can manifest new beginnings from this. As above, so below. You have everything in your power. And this card is so magical, so manifesting, so powerful. Really does talk about um, the fact that you're going to be able to handle the changes and transitions around you. Even if you think, no, I can't. There is some magic on the way to say, yes, you can. Deep emotions to heal. The two of swords. Deep emotions to heal. Now, sometimes we can't do much about stuff. Sometimes we've just got to sit and be with it. We've just got to be in that moment of acceptance here. And although that can be um, painful or sometimes make you feel stuck, this deep emotion that needs to heal is very mental around you. So your stresses, your worries, your um thoughts coming in there which is affecting your intuition which is affecting your well-being there so your deep emotions that need to be healing is to just pause for a minute just be in that space of acceptance that still space even if sometimes it feels like being stuck just be in that space because in time things will move forward the flow will start to come back and the last but not least tarot scorpio Ooh, scorpio tarot message the strength card you have the strength to be able to get through difficulties even if you again even if you feel like you can't or you don't want to you might have to be very mindful how you say things or how you do things so be careful i'm going to sneeze bless me you might be um, you might find that you have to bite your tongue a little bit now this card is all about handling things with care with sensitivity love winning over hate so deal with people deal with yourself in a sensitive manner give yourself a bit of a break You've got the strength to get through things, but allow yourself to be looked after, allow yourself to be nurtured, allow yourself to be cared for and caressed as you do for others. The strength card as your Scorpio tarot message also indicates that you've got the power to be able to handle things similar to what we said earlier. So really, if you feel like you can't manage things, you absolutely can. All right. The strength card also does remind you, though, that you may need to bite your tongue at times. And you might need to handle the situation in a tactful way. Don't throw your toys out the pram. Don't scream and shout. Do things in love. So there you go. That is your Scorpio tarot spread and block. Enjoy.